first, let's start with your most recent news. You're currently involved in a band called Freak Show. Uh, there is an album out called So Shall It Be. Here we are. Um, now, to be clear, you're not on the album. You you joined the band after the album was recorded. So let's start with the, the lineup on the album is uh, Carlos Cavasso, obviously from Quiet Riot, uh, Stet Howland on drums from Wasp and Metal Church. Uh, Ronnie, I'm going to get his last name wrong, Borchert? Borchert, yeah. Okay. Uh, from a band called Miss Crazy. And then on the album, the bass player is Greg Chason, who we've that's had on the show. That's uh, a fact, yes. Greg, uh, yeah. most people will know Greg as the bass player from Badlands. He currently has a project called Atomic Kings. Right. And after the album was recorded, uh, my understanding is Greg recommended you to join the band. You appear in the video for the single. Uh, tell us how you got involved and tell us a little bit about the album. I, you know, it's probably the fault of Steel Panther. <laughs> uh, Everything somebody, is Steel Panther's fault. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> posted uh, a clip of their performance on America's Got Talent on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I, I forget whose thread it was we were talking on. And I said, how come I'm not in a band like Steel Panther? I deserve that. And a couple of people responded and said, yeah, you know what? You're right. You should be in a band like Steel Panther. Greg Chason just happened to see that conversation, tagged me in it, and tagged Ronnie for sure. And then off offline, he told me, reach out, and, and I'm going to put you in touch with Ronnie. He goes, I just recorded an album with this band. He goes, you'd be perfect for it. He goes, I can't commit. I've already got Atomic Kings. I've got my store, you know, the music store. There's our guitar there in, in, in Phoenix. You know, he settled there. And, and so he says, I, I can't jump on that, that wagon with them. He goes, but he says, I just recorded the album. Greg and I have a lot of the same bass influences from the 70s. You know, your Humble Pie and, and Grand Funk Railroad and like that and so forth. So our styles are almost similar, even though I've done more metal stuff. He's done more bluesy stuff. Right. But we still share that same commonality. And he said, this, this is right up your alley. He got in touch with Ronnie. He says, I got to recommend, you know, he, Ronnie goes, if you can't commit to who can you, can you recommend somebody? Greg told me, he told Ronnie, the first thing out of my mouth was Rick Fox. He goes, Rick would be perfect for this. He says, uh, um, uh, he told me, my bass lines are fairly easy enough to, you know, you can pick up on these. And once you got it down, there's room for you to kind of do whatever you want with them. Like okay. that. So um, he put me in touch with Ronnie. Ronnie and I talked, and and uh, they they were also looking at two other uh, A-list bass players. Uh, I don't know if I'm at liberty to say who that was, but sure uh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, one of them was a bass player from Quiet Riot, and the other was a bass player with Cinderella. So that's why I'm not saying their names. Um, okay. And they, he, Ronnie said he talked to Carlos and Stet. And Stead and I have known each other since the 80s, right when he was first getting into Wasp. I was working at a, a, a moving company called Starving Students in L.A. Stead happened to come in with one other guy, another rocker guy. And we were like the three rocker guys working on the moving trucks together. So, you know, Stead and I go wait that far back. And um, um, so they, they mentioned my name. She goes, I love Rick. Rick's like a brother. He goes, yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd, I'd like to have Rick in the band play play with Rick. This is what I'm told. And and Carlos, I've worked with Carlos briefly uh, in 84, 85, when uh, Sin was in the recording studio. We were in Kendon Recording Studios in Burbank doing our, our album master demos. And somehow, I don't know how, Kevin DeBro got my phone number and called me up and said that they had just kicked Rudy out of the band and they were getting ready. And he was like inebriated. Kevin was like three out of drunk, high, whatever. I, I thought it was a, a gag, a joke. He said, no, seriously, because you got recommended. Uh, we've got a South American tour coming up and you were recommended. So I need you to meet with Frankie, get the tape of the set list. And you're going to be working with Carlos to bring you up to speed. The only thing is we ask that uh, you don't tell anybody about this. I said, all right, fine. I'm sworn to silence. I met with Frankie, gave me the tape. Uh, I was going over Carlos's house uh, in, in off Laurel Canyon. 
we were so that was my brief working with them somehow the word got out i don't know how it might have been dana strom who knows um because he was producing us and and i got i didn't get the gig uh i i got a passport out of it and and i i when we were shooting the video in reno i asked carlos about it he goes i have no idea what went down i don't know how that happened he goes but here we are we're working together now so so you know we all get along really well uh, we're all of the same mind we're on the same page and and uh i'm, I'm I'm blessed and grateful to be in this position. This is something like a, you know, like a dream come true for me. Uh, you know, I've never, I didn't, I haven't gotten to that level yet. So uh, this would be awesome. You know, uh, like I said, a blessing for me. Uh, Ronnie is a, an amazing songwriter. I've gotten to hear uh, some of his Miss Crazy stuff. And, and, you know, he, he was in Amsterdam. He had Trixie. He had, uh, you know, he's connected with a lot of people. In the business, he's released, I don't know, almost 20 something albums. But I, I didn't know who he was, you know, like that. And so we 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 talk all the time now and everything. And and so uh it worked out great. Uh they flew me to to the decide user, you got the gig. And right, we haven't even played a note together yet. Right. You know, this is all on Greg's recommendation, you know, and then plus whatever Ronnie's seen of me on the internet and by playing here, playing there, work the stuff I've recorded on. Um, you know, I've, I've jammed with Sam Kennison. I've jammed with Ronnie James Dio. But that wasn't on bass, though. But, you know, but I was connected. Anyway, so uh, it seemed like a, a natural fit. And they flew me to Reno a few months ago. And we did the video for You Shine. And we did another video, uh, which will be, I don't know when it's coming out. But uh, it, that was my first. I didn't know what songs we were going to record until I got there. You know, I haven't even had the album yet. Ronnie was playing me stuff in, in the car. We were driving back and forth from, to the to the studio. So when they had it, uh, they were running it through the through the house sound system. So I, just, I plugged in the amp and I was just learning the song on the spot. Like that. Because I got to know where I was going to put my hands on the neck, you know, uh, like that. So I just learned You Shine right before we recorded it. Yeah, so that was my that was my question. So they obviously were interested in you and they reached out to you and made you an offer. But at what point did you hear the music and decide the music was a good fit for you? The only song I had heard that they had on YouTube was uh, Loving You, Loving Me. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's, it, it, so that kind of gave me an idea of what the style was. But then I, I could, when, when I got to Reno and we were driving from the airport to the studio or to take a, a dinner break. Ronnie was playing this stuff on a, on a CD in his car, running it past us. And I, then I start to hear a little bit more of the diversity of the material. And, and me, because I've been exposed to so much music over my life, I can hear stuff in anybody's song and go, oh, that sounds like this, or that sounds like that. Or like when Greg Chason sent me his, his Atomic King stuff, Automatically, I said, well, I hear Deep Purple, this song in here. I hear Grand Funk here. I hear this. I hear this. And Greg's like, well, we wear our influences on our sleeves. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the same way. I always admit I, I got this idea from here, from there. So, you know, I'm, I'm listening to the album. I'm like, okay, so Get It Ready reminds me of, it's right out of the school of Motley Crue Dockin. Mm -hmm. That kind of, I don't know if you've heard the album yet or not. Yeah, I have. Um, Wendy which is dedicated to uh, Ronnie's wife, Wendy, reminds me of Wasp. Yeah. It's just heavy in your face like Wasp. Uh, you Shine. Um, there is some, I hear 60s psychedelic arrangements in there. Mm -hmm. um, I hear some the, enough, the, enough, which would fit that bill. Yeah. And I I, 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 I did an interview not long ago with, with Chip. I wasn't really that familiar with Enough's Enough. The mm -hmm. closest thing that I've heard that sounded like that was Electric Boys, if you remember their yeah. album. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. they had that 60s kind of psychedelic thing in there. And Ronnie's got a signature in his vocal style that I, I heard recently on some of his Miss Crazy stuff. He's got this haunting wail, this ah, you know, and it raises the hair up on my arms, it goes right up my neck. Mm -hmm. And that's what he, he, he does it in, in that, he does it in a, in a, in a Another couple of songs too. Uh, so shall it be, is a is a song written to dedicated to Jesus. So it's like in the vein of Striper, 
right the message right. lyrically is 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 it's about jesus uh it's a heavy it's kind of to, like a to me i hear a 70s steppenwolf kind of groove in that and and i i was a fan of steppenwolf since 1968 right that was my first band i grew up you know really into was steppenwolf at the age of 13 so i hear that 70s influence in it somebody else may hear some